is uh, the April 16th, 2020 uh, edition of Nature in Your Backyard. And today I'm going to talk about millipedes. But I wanted to review for my new viewers um, why I'm here. This program started spontaneously with no forethought whatsoever um, to uh, as an outreach when I found out that Radford City Schools would be closed for the rest of the year. And so I wanted to contribute, I wanted to engage kids of all ages from K through 12 in our school system with some good education. Um, and uh, uh, this program is not about just watching me. It's about going outside and finding stuff. And what I started doing was just find, following nature, following spring as, as it unfolded. And everything that I've shown so far, and I've done one to three videos every day, almost every day for the last three to four weeks, is just whatever I came across, just whatever I found walking across uh, in my backyard or in Wildwood Park. And everything that, that I'm showing you, you can find too. And so I don't want you to just watch this video and be entertained. I want you to go outside and find stuff yourself and try to find some of these things. And remember, don't believe everything you hear on TV. Fact check. Uh, when I name things for you, it's really about empowering you to go out and find out more about that uh, plant or animal. So uh, today's topic is millipedes. And the Appalachian Mountains are one of the most diverse places in the world for millipedes. There's over a thousand species of millipedes in the Appalachian Mountains. In fact, Virginia Tech has a millipede lab where they just study millipedes. You could go to college and, be, and study millipedes. It's a big deal. Now, what are millipedes and how are they different from centipedes? Well, let's, let's take a look at this first millipede and let's look at its features. So this millipede is called the American Giant Millipede. And it really is giant. Uh, this is honestly, this is the biggest millipede that I have ever seen in my life. He is huge and I'm going to pick him up so you can see how big he is compared to my hand. He is almost as big around as my pinky and um, he has many many segments and many many legs and you can see he's exploring. And one of the things that I found out yesterday when I tried to put him down is I can hold him upside down and he doesn't fall off because he's got so many legs. So the word millipede, milli means a thousand. And so millipedes, we'd say, oh, well, they're the thousand-legged creatures. But they don't really have a thousand legs. They actually have about, this one here would have about 300 to 350 uh, legs. And you can see as he walks, those legs kind of, move in a wave-like fashion. It must be pretty hard to coordinate that many legs to get a smooth motion. And you can see him climbing around my hand. I'm going to put him down on this paper towel here. And I've been handling him and he's getting pretty used to to being handled and you know I googled and, and looked up millipedes online too and there's actually people that get them uh, and raise them for pets. This guy here is probably could be anywhere between three years old and ten years old. Um, millipedes when they're first born have seven segments. Females will lay an egg. They lay a single egg in a nest of, you know, like this, of regurgitated food. And um, uh, they'll wrap around that egg until it hatches. When the millipede first hatches out, he'll have seven segments. And if you can, if I can zoom in, let me see if I can zoom in for you on his front part. And you can see that on his, there we go, 
On his front part, do you see those smaller segments there? One, two, three, four, five, six segments. There's only one leg on each segment. And millipedes, when they're born, have only have six legs. And as they grow, they add more and more uh, segments and legs. And if we could look really, really closely at the segments on this guy, we would find that after those first segments, this millipede has two legs per segment. So that's one of the features of millipedes. The other feature of millipedes is they have almost a cylindrical body and they have a hard exoskeleton. Millipedes are arthropods like insects and arthropods like crayfish and insects and uh, crabs and shrimp. In order to grow, they all have to shed their exoskeleton. That's one of been our themes that we've been talking about is um, organisms with an exoskeleton. I have an endoskeleton. These guys have an exoskeleton. And this guy is taking off. Notice, too, what has he got on his head? He's got two feelers, which he uses to sample and test the world in front of him and get information from it. So millipedes are also very important to, in our environment because they um, eat decaying matter. So millipedes are, 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 are not predators. They don't bite. Um, and they eat decaying matter. And there have been read that there's some scientists that believe 50% of the leaf litter on a forest floor is recycled through the action of millipedes. So there's a lot of millipedes um, in, on, on the forest floor. Now, now, since we're in the kitchen, we want to keep, keep track of where this guy goes. Millipedes need damp environments. And some people are sometimes horrified to find in their basement, if their basement gets damp, they find lots and lots of millipedes in their basement, and they're not happy about that. Well, the millipedes won't hurt you. They don't bite. And the best way to get millipedes in a, in a damp basement is to get your basement dried out and figure out how you're getting water in there. So now millipedes can defend themselves. And this was another part of uh, our, our discussion today is the chemical warfare that millipedes do. Millipedes have mastered weapons of mass destruction. They've mastered chemical warfare. This particular millipede, when disturbed, secretes a oozy yellow substance and, um, and it will stain your hand and it's toxic. So after handling a millipede, never touch your eyes, never um, put your hands in your mouth after a millipede. And if you pick one up like this, he might release that toxic material on you. Now this guy has actually gotten to know me because I've, I've picked him up several times now to look at him and, and, and think about how I could prepare my video lesson for you guys today. <clears throat> and he's not releasing that yellow stuff uh, today that he did before. Uh, well, actually, there's a yellow spot on my hand right now, that yellow stain. So that yellow stain is a toxic chemical that this guy releases. Now, other millipedes will also release toxic chemicals. And there's one that I encounter sometimes in Wildwood Park, and I'll show it to you. He's got bright yellow markings on him. Um, he actually releases a chemical called hydrogen cyanide. And hydrogen cyanide is one of the most toxic poisons on the earth. And millipedes use that to protect themselves from pet predators. So millipedes protect themselves with predators uh, from predators by releasing toxic substances. This one um, doesn't release hydrogen cyanide, but other millipedes will as well. Um, and some of them even release sulfuric acid to sting and burn anything that tries to, to eat them. Now the last line of defense, and let's see if I can get this guy to do it, is millipedes will curl up in a ball if you bother them. But he's, this guy is so, is so trusting of me and has gotten so used to me that um, he won't curl up. Because the first day I found him, I've had him here 
um, in this little uh, uh, pan with some uh, moss and stuff in it uh, for a while now. And when I first picked them up, he rolled up into a tight, tight ball and put all his legs on the inside of that ball because, you know, you can see that's where he's like softer and stuff. And um, a predator might try to, you know, catch his, his uh, uh, exposed underbelly. And he would just roll up into a tight, tight ball, um, and, and I couldn't unroll him. And he stayed like that for 30 minutes. But he's gotten to know me. He knows I'm not going to eat him. And um, he's not doing that behavior for me, even though that I, I want him to do it. So the last thing I want to talk about is the difference between millipedes and centipedes. So here's the millipede that we talked about. The millipedes have um, uh, segments with two pairs of legs on each segment. And this is a centipede on the bottom here. Centipedes have uh, one leg per segment. They tend to be very flat, and they're fast. Millipedes, two legs per segment. Milli means a thousand, meaning a thousand legs, but they really have like 350 legs when mature. Centipedes, centi means a hundred. So um, the centipedes are, are called the hundred legs. They don't really have a hundred legs, but they got a lot of legs. The difference is, Millipedes, two legs per segment. Centipedes, one leg per segment. Millipedes are plant eaters. Centipedes are ferocious predators. And as predators, centipedes are often have bright colors. They're often a, a, a reddish or orange color. And they're creepy because they move so fast with all their legs. They have adapted some uh, uh, front appendages that act like jaws that can inject, uh, can inject toxins uh, when the, uh, so they can actually bite people or bite their prey and inject toxins in to paralyze their prey so they can eat it. So you don't want to pick up a centipede ever. Centipedes um, can uh, harm you. They can bite you with their modified jaw-like uh, appendages and inject poison in your skin. They won't kill you. Um, it might hurt. Um, nobody's ever died from a centipede bite, but you don't want to handle these. Millipedes are um, uh, plant eaters. They can't bite, but they do have chemical warfare and they can excrete hydrogen cyanide, hydrochloric acid on your skin. Um, the giant millipede here, you can see this yellow on my hand, uh, has a secretion that also has toxins in it. So today's episode of Nature in Your Backyard was the American giant millipede, and he really is giant. Two legs per segment. Um, as they get older and older, they add more segments and more legs with each molt. This one could be anywhere from three years old to, I think, in the wild, they say that they can live up to 11 years. Appalachian Mountains, one of the most diverse places in the world for millipedes. And the Appalachian Mountains are really uh, one of the the uh, the mud, most diverse ecosystems in the whole world. For example, the trees in Appalachians, we have more species of trees in one acre of forest than in all of Europe. We have a hundred and I think over 120 species of trees in the Appalachian Mountains, second only to the tropical rainforest. So another one of my goals is I want you guys to appreciate where you live. You live in the Appalachian Mountains, one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. And the Appalachian Mountains, because of their north-south orientation, um, and uh, with the ice ages pushing south and returning, um, it was sort of a repository, a Noah's Ark of uh, protection for all kinds of different species. And with our... our um, uh, little coves and streams and 
little gorges and stuff. We've got uh, great habitats for millipedes that like those damp places and stuff. So again, I don't want you to just watch this video. I want you to go outside. I want you to go with your friends, go with your mom and dads. I want you to take your kids outside and find cool stuff. Every day I'm bringing you something new that I found. I haven't gone to look for anything yet. And I have more topics to, to share with you than I know what to do with right now. So my goal is to do a nine o'clock um, um, live video or I'll post a prepared video on my, my website. So bottom line, go outside, look around, turn rocks over, go to a stream or pond, turn rocks over, see what you can find. And I'm going to do some videos on what would be some good things for you or your kids to have as you go out and find things, things like magnifying glasses and bug boxes and things that you can use to help you observe the natural world. So go outside, enjoy the day, see what you can find.